Welcome to my uh, second talk for this PSConf. So I see a, a few heads were here yesterday. Super happy. It means you kind of liked it yesterday. You decided to come back today. I know there's a lot of good talks, so thanks for coming to mine. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, this uh, set of commandlets I wrote that's called uh, Invoke Azure Hunter. And we're going to be talking about uh, Detection, Sentinel, and uh, Microsoft 365 Defender, KQL queries, and link it to attack. And there might be a bit of Bloodhound in there also, just out of a bad habit. So, uh, yeah, thanks to the sponsors, of course. Who am I? Same guy than yesterday. So still SAT processor, still Walter Legowski, still detection engineer, at least this morning I checked, I'm still online at Falcon Force. Uh, yeah, same as yesterday. And if you want to know more about me, who I really am, this is just an online persona. Catch me outside and we can have a, a beer and a talk or something. And yeah, really happy to be back. Uh, I know you guys are too, so, so far we're having a good time. I'll try not to uh, change the mood. So what we do at Falcon Force, uh, for those who weren't uh, here yesterday, Falcon Force is a little shop in uh, Holland where we do a lot of red teaming, uh, purple teaming, and uh, de detection engineering with a kind of uh, specializing into Sentinel and uh, KQL detections, basically. On the agenda for today, so what is hunting? What is Microsoft 365 Defender? What is Sentinel? What is KQL? Once I introduce all this, I can talk about Azure Hunter and show you what you can do with it already and what I want to do with it uh, in the future. So in the previous episode, for those who weren't here yesterday, yesterday we kind of described the whole uh, cyber universe. We did some ontology. I kind of introduced a model of objects and relationship. And uh, we talked about attack. Atomic Red Team, uh, OSEM, and uh, Prelude. And then we did a bit of this. Yeah. Today, I want to talk mostly about uh, detection. So that's where we are on this whole tree. We're focused only on this. Yesterday, we mentioned a bit detection, but it was very generic. Today, we dive into uh, the code that runs uh, those detection, or at least, how do you do that? So what is hunting? <coughs> Sorry. Maybe to make it live. Anybody in the audience has an idea? What is hunting? What is detection, maybe? More than hunting? What do we do? What's my job? We try to catch the bad guys, right? So we try to detect them. Slight difference between detection and hunting. Detection rules are probably large, stable, and you know the result you get. Hunting is more, uh, maybe less automated and more of a individual process where you're on a hunch and you try to go follow uh, behaviors in the network and let's say whatever you build in hunting might become a detection rule at the end. I don't know if that makes a, a logical difference for you guys. And why do we need detection? Uh, yesterday we mentioned of course there's mitigation but you cannot mitigate everything. Um, Sometimes it's needed for the business to work that way. Sometimes it's a Microsoft won't fix. Sometimes, for a lot of reasons, you still have holes in your cheese, right? And at that point, you need detection. Same thing, hardening is good, but um, attackers are good enough to unharden your hardening, right? So if you don't have stuff in place to detect this, then you might have a blind spot here, right? So we're going to start by setting up a bit of terminology because you will see this um, in the slides. So a SOC, you might hear this. Uh, big companies usually have their own SOC. Uh, sometimes in smaller shops, that's outsourced to uh, another company, for example. The SIM, that's your security information and event management. Basically, that's the system where you feed all those events and you can filter them and uh, find them. And then SOAR, that's probably after an incident happened and you need automated response, for example. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, an agent. So I put very simple definitions here. We could, again, try to uh, fine tune them. But let's say in general, <coughs> sorry, an agent is what runs on the host and forward those events to the central uh, point. That would be your seam. 
an event is whatever is logged in your seam. That's not, ne yeah, not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, a rule is a kind of a filtering on events. Uh, of course, you have this whole bucket with events. You need to be able to filter them. And uh, a rule has a logic in there to find specifically what you're looking for. An alert is when a rule triggers. And that's already a sign, but it's not necessarily bad. And an incident, and when it's most likely bad, right? There's been a bit more investigation, and you, you decide that this alert is actually uh, an incident. There could be false positive also. That's what we call FP. So there's a lot of false positive also in our, in our field. Um, what is Microsoft 365 Defender? I put the official definition. I highly, you don't need to read everything, but mostly what's in, uh, in blue. So Microsoft 365 Defender will give you detection, prevention, investigation, and response across endpoint identities email, mostly for your um, Office 365, uh, <coughs> whatever is in the cloud. So what can you do with the Microsoft 365 Defender, or what can you collect? And here, there's a, I'm super confused, A, because I'm starting with, the, with all these products, and B, because Microsoft keeps changing the name. <laughs> so you might hear me say MDE instead of M365 Defender. Basically, it's all in there at the end, but yeah, the names keep changing for marketing purposes, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> what is a Sentinel? Uh, so Sentinel somehow for me is a, a broader solution, let's say. Um, it is a full-blown seam with a full-blown SOAR uh, solution included. And it gives you uh, detection, threat visibility, proactive hunting, and uh, threat response. I put a graph here, super complex, but it's to try to explain. So if you were looking at uh, MDE, it's probably used to be called Microsoft Threat Protection, MTP, so it's probably here. Somehow it sits a bit under Sentinel. They don't have to, they, you can work only in one or the other, but they can also, uh, the Microsoft 365 can be fed into, defend, into Sentinel, sorry, to give you the full, uh, the full scope, basically. Which one to choose? Um, like I said, I tried to simplify a bit from the one before. They're kind of complementary in my world, so if you have both, good for you. <laughs> if you have only one, well, try to get the second, I would say. But there's also a marketing uh, approach in here. Um, maybe quickly, so it's a PowerShell conference, so I'm not gonna, uh, we're gonna do mostly PowerShell, but I can show you what it looks like. So that's the, um, oh, trick. Trick. Yes. So this is the, the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. Um, you see here it says 0xff, that's our Falcon Force uh, shorthand, and then the ball pit is the name of our uh, test environment, basically. And here you could write uh, queries and you can run them and you will get your um, events. Am I connected? Yes. Is the Wi-Fi super slow? <clears throat> so that's what it looks like in Sentinel. should return an event here, but oh yeah, there we go. And then when you click on the event here, uh, oh you can see that this event uh, happened. So I'm not gonna go further into the, the UI here, but it's just to show you how normal people do it, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then uh, then there's the PowerShell people who wanna do everything via PowerShell. I'm one of these, so I'll show you that. Before I show you that, I'll show you the same thing in uh, Sentinel this time, so same query running, a different UI, but you can do the same things and you will get uh, your event right there and you can have a look so you already see that they look like objects right and you already see the limitation of a ui that once you have these objects you need to click everywhere you can't compare properties you can get two objects align them and stuff so powershell is going to be uh, your friend for this right 
Now what you saw here, this little bit of code here is actually a KQL query. And this is what I'm going to uh, mention right now. So what is KQL? Uh, <coughs> any of you already worked with KQL? Ah, nice. OK. OK. So it's the Cousteau query language. I just love the name because I grew up in those years where we used to watch Captain Cousteau uh, on TV on Sunday with a different uh, name, but that's where it comes from, actually, the Cousteau. So KQL stands for Cousteau Query Language. It's a tool to explore your data. Simply, when you run a KQL query, it will process the data, return the results, and the idea that it should be easy to read, easy to uh, create, and um, easy to automate. I think they quite uh, achieved that. So there's a lot of resources, and I won't go into the detail of building your own KQL queries. I think that would be a complete uh, other talk, and probably not for this conference anyway. But uh, there's a lot of resources you can use to kind of uh, find uh, some stuff. I'll show you quickly ours, because uh, why not? <coughs> so we have this uh, repository of the <coughs> Falcon Force team. Every Friday, we release some uh, open source uh, rules. Part of offering to the customer is a subscription to more rules that we write, but regularly we, we release uh, open source rules. And you can see already, if you were here yesterday, that you recognize the, the um, uh, tactics of uh, MyTray. So they are sorted per tactic. And let's say if I go into collection and you can take a rule, and it's actually, again, a YAML object. And you will see a little description. Uh, and here is finally what a rule can look like. So of course, in my example, I'm running some super simple ones. But the more complicated the check and the filtering you need to make on logs, the more um, complicated the query can get. That's a simple one. Yeah, that's, that's a single query. <laughs> yes. And what it does, you can read it if you're interested. But there's a technical description of what it does. We're looking for event ID in this one, 5143, which is triggered when a share is created and so on. So all the rules explain what they do, of course, why we look at those events, what's the rationale behind in the detection, or what would be eventually the attack. And here again, you see that they're linked to those uh, tactics and to those uh, techniques from MyTrade, right? So that's uh, where you can um, find a lot. There's, of course, not only ours, I showed uh, the Falcon for stuff, but there's the uh, official Azure Sentinel repo that you can have a look at. And here you will find on the detection or hunting queries, for example, a lot, a lot of stuff sorted by uh, topics. And let's say Azure Firewall. And let's see. Up. So they have a different shape of object, but like you see that security is going the DevOps way, that we have everything in source control as YAML objects that we can call and use in whatever framework people build. But those objects exist. People can do what they want with it. And yeah, the, there's like here really on this one, a treasure trove of queries for every type of uh, malicious activity you could think of, basically. So there is always a moment in the talk where I say it's all connected. Oops, let me go back full screen. And it is. So I just went back to full screen for this, actually. Sorry. I'll show you something here. For those who were here yesterday, um, see, demo. So if I take, again, uh, an attack technique, and this, this is just to show you how PowerShell makes my life easier at work, or how I made my life easier at work with PowerShell, because that's actually all the modules here. I, I kind of wrote them, and uh, I like to write my stuff without dependency. So I'm proud that this is all my code, and it does the job for me uh, when I sign in the morning. So, so here we can just, like we did yesterday, take a single technique, no matter what. the. <coughs> force authentication, for example. But if I pipe this to my hatchery now, so yesterday I piped whatever technique into a purple owl to kind of run the attack. But I can also pipe it to my hatchery, where here I will find, uh, let me do, you will see it better like this. 
all the rules that we have in our repo that are linked to this specific technique. For example, a relaying attack using Petit Potam. Have you heard of Petit Potam? Yes, all those latest stuff. So part of the job we do is staying on top of those attacks, understanding them, breaking them down, and finding what events we can uh, detect on all of this. So NTLM relaying attack are quite a thing. Uh, yeah. So that was just quickly to show again that it's all connected, uh, the tools. Once you build your little tool, you put them in your toolbox, and they all kind of all work together. And that's what we really like about PowerShell, that I'm in my shell, I can get date, and get the hatchery from the same place without having to move. So that's what makes me uh, super happy. So one thing I have to say, yesterday I was too long, so panic, I shortened my demo, I shortened my slides, I, I hope it still makes sense. And if it doesn't, catch me outside and I'll, uh, I'll give you the rest of the content. Um, so what is Azure Hunter now? Um, yeah. It's the, the, the module that I built to play with, uh, with these uh, KQL queries. What does it do? Uh, I wanted to be able to do this. I'll show you why at the end. I wanted to be able to run uh, KQL queries and return objects, because we all love objects. I want to be able to write uh, custom events to Sentinel. I want to be able to manipulate watch lists in Sentinel and eventually get the incidents also as uh, objects. So the command lists that I wrote. To do this, invoke as a hunter. That's for the KQL part. Invoke as a writer. Yeah, it's hard to find names. For Azure, they need to start with as, and then you're stuck, right? And I don't want to make them too long, contrary to the other people. So I try to <laughs> keep them compact. Yeah, that's also one thing, and why I like to do it without dependency. I'll show you how I do the tokens, but like, first time I went to import the Azure module, and he started like pumping 5,000 commandlets onto my system, and we're like, <laughs> That's not called a dependency, right? That's called uh, too much. So <coughs> I rewrote everything that I don't need any any Azure module or anything. I just do it my way. And it's probably not the best way to do it, but that's how I do it. Um, yeah, so writer is to write custom event, and then the as watcher set as watcher is to play with the, the watch list and the, the incidents. And yeah. The rest of this is going to be demo, so let's give it a shot. Oops. This one I will not show, but there's a little module I wrote here. That I Can you the font a little bit for yep, sorry. Oops. Is that good like so? You guys see better? So here in this demo, I'm just uh, lo loading all my secrets from a vault. I hope you all do this. Me is kind of a unsecure vault without password, but simply by doing this, I can like get everything I have into my vault and put them into variables. So now if I do app secret, which you should not show, right? I'm good. It's a secure string, and I'm not showing any of the stuff I didn't want my demo to show. So to connect to uh, M365, I'm going to create a Azure as a hunter session by giving, um, oh, maybe that's a part I want to show. Sorry, I'm a bit lost. Oops. So, yeah, when I started playing with this, I started not too long ago. Oops. You didn't like it. Okay. You know what? I'll Google it. <laughs> That's what we all do, right? So it was a Sentinel API 101. So when I got started and I wanted to do this, and I say, OK, how do I talk to Sentinel? And there's, a, there's actually. Is the Wi Fi super slow or am I having an issue? I told you yesterday I could juggle in the meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the idea is how do you find info? And I'm like, uh, oops, maybe this one? Nah. 
as your Sentinel, Microsoft Partner Community. That should be the one, right? He's coming. Anyway, okay, I'll, uh, I'll show you, ah, voila. There's this, uh, Sarah Young wrote a blog post. I don't know who you are, but I thank you for your blog post. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nightmare, actually, authenticating to all those different parts. There's a different way to do it. You need different bits, different. So here, if you're looking to do this, there's a blog post that explains all the APIs and how to connect to it. It's really well done, and it links to all the, the Microsoft further documentation. Basically, what I'm going to do here is that I uh, have an app in uh, Azure, and it has its own secret. It has permissions, and that allows me. This is what I use uh, to query it. There's probably other ways to do it nowadays with managed identities and stuff. I didn't look into this yet when I built it, but yeah, this is all one big poke, and it's ev ev like evolving. I think also. Graph API is the thing I want to uh, really look into. But for now, I used a bit the old school way of doing it. And if you are curious how that works, everything is in this post for the log analytic workspace, for the management API, for the custom HTTP connector where you can input your uh, so super nicely uh, done blog post that sums it up. So what I wanted to show that here I can create a session tweak that will handle my initial token request, and then the token has a, a, an expiration date, and yeah, the module auto renews it if you need it. So basically, in memory, you have a, a session created. Oops, I checked my demo before coming. Uh, I didn't clean my uh, environment, so I'm just gonna null that variable and do it again so that we only have one session and then you see my ASCII art. I also put ASCII art in all my modules. When you're thinking about building your module, ASCII is a nice way of doing something while the other brain is working, right? So it's a good, uh, it's a good stress relief. So now I have this uh, session zero, and if, if in the module, so I'm not putting the, the parameters, but if you give only D3 parameters, he know that's for MD because you would need more to connect to Sentinel, for example. And that same query that I ran um, in the UI, I can run it here, and finally, we should get nice objects. <sighs> So that same object you saw on the pane that wasn't really handy. Here I could put it in a variable, dot, dot sourcing and everything to manipulate them. So it's a, as soon as I have objects, I'm happy. And yeah, the objects are a bit actually different. So if you want to see all the empty fields in the object, I usually don't want to see them. But uh, you can see that some fields are actually empty just by adding the, the show empty uh, field, for example. So that's the only thing I can do in MDE is run a query and get the events, and then build some logic around it locally if I wanted to. I'm not going to spend too much time on MDE. I want to show you more uh, Sentinel. So creating a Sentinel session is a bit the same thing, except you also give your workspace ID and a shared key. <coughs> shared key is just to be able to write uh, custom logs. Now if I get my session again, you see that I have a different session. I didn't give it a tag, so it's just automatically tagging it as session one, but you could give it a tag for uh, a little handy, friendly name you want to give it, for example. And then I can run that in uh, Azure trick, in uh, Sentinel, sorry, and you get also a nice object back. So that's getting events from MDE and Sentinel, nice one. We check the first box, I can get my uh, events. Now I want to be able to write custom events uh, to Sentinel. That's also, it's possible, so why not? Um, here I'm going to write one quickly, poof. Give it a second to propagate everywhere. And then I can, uh, using uh, the Yazer Hunter, this time now that the event has been created, I can go and fetch it, for example. Bloof, and you see that my uh, computer created this type of log. So that's something when you create custom logs, like Sentinel automatically appends <coughs> some underscore uh, something behind, so CL for custom log, and then all the property underscore D if it's a digit or so. So it's a bit annoying. I heard that there's a new way to declare your schema for your own custom logs. I'm going to look into this uh, next week, but I think it's in preview for now. So. 
for now you still get this ugly underscore dot something after your events, which aesthetically I find not satisfying, but that's probably very secondary. Um, what you can do, of course, because we're in PowerShell, I put it back to null, I'm going to create uh, two sessions. Uh, I only have one uh, tenant to test it in, so I'll create two sessions for the same uh, tenant, just to show you that uh, eventually you could be... Um, so I'm in session one, I'm going to select session zero and one. Oh, you see they both have a little X in front, which tells me this session is connected. And then I could run um, several queries, like a list of queries against a list of tenants. So that starts to be quite powerful already, instead of being in a UI connecting, signing in with a different... Uh, I hate it. So here uh, I have a query list. And if I run it against my two tenants, both, you should see events starting to pile up. <clears throat> Les voilà. It shouldn't be that long normally. I don't know. The Wi-Fi is probably really bad. And then when you run it against several, I added this little dash report. Instead of running, returning only the event, it returns the tag of where it came from, the query that you ran, and the results. So this time I could be hunting across. Let's say if I'm a service provider, I could be hunting across all my uh, client tenants in one place. That's quite, uh, quite. I mean, I find it super powerful, but I don't know if it's super useful. But uh, <laughs> it's a power conference. It, it's not called useful shell. It's called power shell. Uh, the last bit I want to show you here is playing with watch lists. So here we need to pass even more stuff because uh, the authentication is even more complex, but here I'm creating a, this time it's a full full connection to Sentinel and I can do everything. Um, and I just want to show you this. So do I have a process? A list called process list does not exist. Uh, here we're all familiar with this uh, get process, for example. So I'm just taking a random object here. I'm going to put it in a watch list uh, in Sentinel. Oops. Look, created the watch list. So if I look, I have this uh, watch list created. And if I look at the items in the watch list, you can see that this has been populated. So here again, a dummy example with some dummy data, but you can imagine that having a list of your sensitive assets, for example, in a watch list and being able to use that in a query later could be a really nice uh, feature, for example. Um, yeah. And then you can delete the list, of course. And then it's not here anymore, so it's nice. And uh, the last bit of the command list that I built was uh, this one. Doo -doo. Oh, sorry. Oop. So here we're um, getting incidents. So it's a bit different. It's the alert trigger, and that uh, has been deemed an incident. And I can come and uh, look at my incidents and do whatever you want with it. So I'm not, uh, I'm not going to go deeper, that much deeper into the commands, because I removed a lot of my demo and I actually still have time. But uh, yeah, that, that was the, the idea here. Um, and then why am I doing all this? Uh, what's next is the, the question. Shook. So why did I do this? Of course, because I built, I built um, those KQL rule daily, that's my job. So it's nice, instead of going in the UI, I test them in my PowerShell, and that's where I do my stuff. Once it's ready, I commit to the, the repo, and I actually never really go on, onto the portal. But my, my real idea is to uh, flip this sandwich and uh, stick uh, Bloodhound and Sentinel together. Um, and that's a project I'm working on at the moment. But yeah, I kind of see them as really complementary. Like Sentinel sees all the events. It's like having all the times of the bus stops. The Bloodhound is the map. And actually, when you're at the bus stop, you look at the map and the times, right? But they, Bloodhound does not know what happens. You collect once, and he has no clue of the events. 
he only knows the relationship. Sentinel has no clue about the relationship, but it sees all the events. And me and my dream, if I can put those two together, I have like a super peanut butter jelly sandwich. And that's awesome. So yeah, I hope I can come back next year and uh, present that. But um, it still is a, a work in progress. There's a few bits I can show you about this still, because uh, yeah. So the tool I'm building is called Falcon Hound. It's the bloodhound that meets uh, Falcon Force uh, stuff. And then uh, actually when I run my get uh, Falcon Hound config, I'm only querying watch lists in uh, Sentinel that I created. So Falcon Hound config watch list, even edge filter watch list. Oops, I put twice the same. Uh, just to show a bit of cipher, because I like it give you an idea of what I'll be talking about next year. So I can store uh, cipher queries this time to talk to Bloodhound in Sentinel. And the idea is when an event triggers, uh, the SOC analyst could then already enrich his data by going to Bloodhound with some, some more automated queries. So that's, that's my <laughs> the stuff I'm building at the moment. Uh, yeah, and it does rely on Easy store attack out uh, as a hunter. Uh, so it becomes, yeah, the more I build Lego bricks or something, the more I want to build bigger stuff with it. And then to the point it becomes unmanageable because you're the only guy who wrote like 5,000 lines of code. And like, eh. So for now it's a big puck. And uh, I'll share all the code with you guys if you want to have a look at it. But hopefully next year I have something nicely set up with Azure Functions and the Neo4j database sitting in Azure next to Sentinel and the whole stuff. But basically, uh, yeah, that's what I'm busy with with my PowerShell um, lately. And that was about it. So like I said, I think I really shortened it too much this time. But yeah, bad timing. It will be my, my lesson for this uh, this conference. So yeah, thank you to Jeffrey Snover for PowerShell because I'm not the only one in this room, but it did change my life more than I ever expected when I clicked on the first video of, what was it? On the, the Learning Center, they have these videos with Jason Helmick. Uh, yeah. Fantastic way to learn PowerShell if you never did. It's super funny and he wears a different uh, tie in every module. <laughs> this guy was having fun. Uh, yeah, thanks to PS Comfy U for uh, organizing all this, crew and sponsors, and for uh, having me again. Thanks to Falcon Force for letting me uh, come and uh, build all those tools. Thanks to you for attending and to the community and Sarah for uh, building, the, for sharing knowledge or writing blog posts that we can all then start to use in our, in our daily uh, stuff. So that was super fast. Now we have time for questions today. Okay. If you have any. Yeah. Uh, the module you showed yesterday and also today, the, the stuff, is that in a public GitHub right now? It's on my uh, repo. It's maybe not the latest version, but after this, I'm uploading the slides and the latest version to my repo, and I think they can link in the psconf GitHub to mine instead of having them posted in both, because I won't be updating the psconf. Yeah. As long as you do a PR with the link to it, please. Will do. And my slides, yes. So everything will be shared. Uh, also, the easy store, you didn't see it, but that's in my GitHub. It's actually using Sydney's uh, uh, secret management module, and I just weakened it to make it without password. One nice thing, yeah, I don't know if you knew, but like those vaults, they can hold like byte strings and super long payloads. So actually, you can store all your payloads in a vault, and AV doesn't really see it. It's super nice. And you can, call, you can call it by a name and execute it over the pipeline. The, touch, the code never touches anything. So Here is the idea. <laughs> we'll have to have a tomorrow for a community demonstration. Sure. If you want. We're going to organize something. Yeah. People would like to see it. Okay. I can try. It's a kind of a short demo. So, so I have five, nice. five minutes. Exactly. Awesome. I put code in the vault and I run it by its name. Nice. We can do that. Yeah. Sure, but yeah, if you're not using the secret management module, it's also nice in its normal intended way to not show your passwords when you do demos and stuff. That was one of my big scare, 
was showing the, the secret key and the, the app ID on stage and have all my colleagues that were going, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I organized the vault and it's nice, yes. Yep. Um, a question from yesterday, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, it, they kind of, uh, it's all connected, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. So you put together all the stuff from the databases, OSAM, Mitri, uh, yeah. whatever. Um, th those are different, different databases, different, yeah. different stuff from different organizations. How do you link them together? That I, know? I go and get them with an invoke web request. Then I transform them and shape them into object the way I like. I, there's one thing, so when you do YAML to JSON, a, a lot of the DevOps stuff has YAML objects, and then they convert to JSON, and then you pull the JSON with PowerShell, and the structure is not what I like. The objects are super nested and stuff I don't like, so I usually reflatten them a bit, and they stay in memory. Yeah, th that's the, the um, I mean, semantically. So how, when, when some, Mitri entry is then connected with with some group somewhere. How is it? How, how do you? So link? over. How links? How, how, so I how, use the PowerShell. The PowerShell pipeline for this, because like you saw my rules, they they have this uh, technique ID. So I accept the technique ID over the pipeline. If I don't give a name when I search for it. So my pipelines uh, connect stuff via technique ID for all my tools that have technique IDs, and I can jump from one to another. So it's actually several tools that work nicely together, just like PowerShell. And the idea is to use the feature of the pipeline, so catching by property, by property name, or directly uh, with a type of object. If you create, you use classes, and then you can pass uh, an attack a tactic, for example, or by specifying it. Maybe I can show you this, actually, in the code. This is a conference with code. Um, data people now, you need foreign keys and linking your data. I am, but... <laughs> um, let's see, where can I find this nicely? Maybe uh, the easiest would be in the hatchery owl. Uh, when I do, 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 so yeah, I have a lot of stuff like dynamic parameters. You don't have to do all this. I'm just a bad typist. I have two left hands and uh, lazy, so I kind of like to make my life easier. But uh, yeah, um, import hatchery out. That's how I bring all the. So that's what I do here. Same thing. I get all my um, my objects from uh, in JSON format, and then I start to format my custom objects the way I want. It's a bit of an ugly code, but at the end, it it does what it does, and I know what to expect in. Uh, in the format, basically. And then uh, for the pipeline, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, here, do we have any that accepts pipeline input? I'm a bit lost now. Uh, parameter set name. Uh, basically, by declaring it here, and you could say here, um, value from that's the longest one and the one I cannot type without looking at it by property name equals true or one or nothing if you if it's the true right so here I can say I'm passing a technique ID over the pipeline if that was the the property for example by property name of the op the full objects that you shove in there kind of strips everything and look at only this property and finds the magic object, basically. So for me, yeah, the pipeline is a super powerful, uh, powerful way of like passing a whole object and just catching the, the bit you wanted on the fly and moving over to, to another bit. So yeah, if you build your own tools, no matter what you put in the uh, process block, that's fine. I now spend more time building my parameter sets than writing the codes inside. And actually, before I build a command lit, I can almost graph it. I want these two parameter sets using these. And once I have this, I will start working on the code. But usually now I give a name on my parameters. I test them. I see that they react the way I want over the pipeline. And then I put the code, the logic after. That comes second. The, the, the most work for me in elaborating a, a command lit that work together is working on the parameter definition. 
uh, something I spoke about a while ago at PSConf Asia. That was my first talk, and Bartek was there. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, does that answer your question? If if not, would you catch me outside. I can show you with less stress. I can show you more. Yeah. Any other? We still have five minutes. Right. No, but then let's all have a coffee and continue the talk outside. I'm on the orange, so it's a